So the first uh, precept is uh, welcome everything, push away nothing. Welcome everything, push away nothing. This sounds really good. It would make a great bumper sticker. But how do we do it? So we, um, at the Zen hospice that I began, at, Richard mentioned this was the first Buddhist hospice in America, um, we created an environment which was beautiful and um, also receptive. In fact, it was characterized by what I might call a fearless receptivity. In other words, we were willing to meet whatever showed up. Didn't mean we didn't have any fear. We were, fear we were frightened quite often. But we understood that fear wasn't the only thing in the room. To welcome everything and push away nothing doesn't mean we have to like what comes. It only means we have to be willing to meet it. Yeah? Well, I know that we have this expression, end of life, and um, I certainly don't want to deny that, but it's my experience that people, don't, that people die in the middle of their life. They die in the middle of their experience of life. You know, they're not, they're not at a distance from it, actually. In the middle of their glasses or their breathing or some other activity. Yeah. The, the willingness to free ourselves or, and others from the limitations of roles. As I said earlier, professional warmth doesn't heal. When I'm dying, I don't want a role next to me. Um, not a dinner role. Not, not, not somebody playing a role. I want honest, authentic communication. That doesn't mean that we won't have a role to play, that we won't, for example, be a caregiver or a therapist or whatever our particular role is, but of course we won't let ourselves simply be defined by that role. The, the distinction at the bedside is different. It's really different, you know? Marion Woodman and I were talking about this once, the famous you know, feminist Jungian and she went to see one of her uh, clients who was dying. And, um, and the woman began to speak with her about her dreams, which Marion was expert at working with. And, um, and she got quite agitated. And the nurses came in and said, what are you doing? We just had her calm down, you know? And now you're agitating her. And Marion said, I'm not doing anything. I'm just listening to her, you know? So Marion was able to work with her as an of course, she had all her skills as a therapist, but she was also able to work with her human to human. Um, when we get stuck in our role, when, when we get limited by our role, we forget to see the soul of the other person sometimes. We forget to have a soul-to-soul -soul relationship. Yes, ma'am. And we're over here. The, raise your hand again so he can see you. There we are. Thank you. I wonder... If you could just speak for a few minutes about the fact that all these things are true about living as well. Yes. Every single thing you've said. Oh, really? Yeah. And, <laughs> Funny and how I that just, works, huh? Yeah, and I just, <laughs> um, at this point, I'm just struck by yes. All the theories, all the things I've learned in school at Naropa, yeah. all through my life as a therapist, as a person. Sure. Really, it just comes down to what you're talking about, about just sitting down uh -huh. and listening. Yeah. Well, I uh, don't really see what the. Well, you know, let, let, let's, let's not be naive also. Let's recognize yeah, I that. Hear you know, I, I have a tool belt, like, like everybody in this room, yeah. you know, of expertise that I've cultivated, and I'm really glad to have them because they're really handy. You're going to run into situations for which your training is going to be invaluable. Mm -hmm. I have a whole toolbox of tools, but I try not to set that toolbox down between myself and the person I'm serving. I, I want to just come back to what someone said a moment ago about these things of training for life. I, particularly after my own heart attacks and coming close to death, I'm not so sure, and this may seem sacrilegious for a Buddhist, but I'm not so sure that how much we can do to actually prepare for our dying. Um, I am sure that we can use our relationship with dying to show us how to live our life fully. And um, it seems to me that the best preparation for death is a life fully lived. So I think if we can really... Um, use the reflection on dying, the contemplation on death, which has been you know, given to us as a practice from every tradition over time, to really know how to live our life. I think this is the, way, the right way to proceed. 
I think it's useful reflection for us and, and uh, to again use death as our advisor and to really um, uh, bring the precariousness and the very preciousness of this life forward. Um, I think I can't um, I can't stress that enough. I think that's the most important point of any discussion on dying is how does it help us to really live our lives fully. So I think that's a good place to end. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you all very much. <laughs>